to Bits Be Trippin'. It's been a few weeks and we got one hell of an episode for you here. We've been teasing the internet for the past month on this rig. The team worked extra hard to bring this one to you. The wait is over. This is episode 28. Our single rig 12 GPU, six times power color Devil 13s. This is your host Carter, let's get into this. Now, okay, I know the very first thing you're gonna say is, wait a minute here. Yes, there's 12 GPUs on the same frame, but wait a minute, is that two motherboards under there? I know, sensationalist clickbait title. But our original intention of this rig was to actually try to get these 12 GPUs on this through hacking and trying to manipulate a Linux distro to make more than three of them work. But we'll get into that in a second. Let's take a look at what we're dealing with here. Now from a single card, we're talking some crazy numbers here. We're talking two 390 GPUs on this single PCB. That's 5,120 stream processors, 320 texture units, and 16 gigs of RAM on the card. While these are considered Hawaii processors, their core clock speed out of the gate is 1,000 megahertz. In addition, the memory is down a tick to at 1,350 stock. Now don't fret about that too much because this thing is a good overclocker. Now about a month ago is when we picked these up. And at the time on Newegg, these were $669 with a $100 melon rebate. Now consider we ordered six of them right out of the gate. We could only get one of those melon rebates, but we weren't fretting about that too much. Upon pulling off the cellophane and opening this box, you're immediately greeted with a very high-end mouse. Now that mouse is from Razer and that's the Orberos which is wireless and rechargeable, coming with its own battery included in this packaging. Which when we break down into the various levels of this packaging, you're met with a great foil representation of this graphics card, along with other hidden compartments that hold an actual PCB stand for the graphics card, supplied purely because of the weight of this card. And that brings us full circle to talk about the packaging briefly on this. This has to be one of the best packaging solutions I've ever seen from a graphics card. Power Color sets the bar on what's actually possible from a retail level in a packaging side, especially when looking at last episode's Pro Duo packaging. Now let's get back to the pertinence of this episode. Now as previously mentioned, this card is huge. And when I mean huge, now we're talking 12.5 inches long, two and a half inches thick, and about five and a half inches tall with about another inch of consideration with the extra power cables coming out. Now, if you're considering this for a PC, you're talking really taking up four slots, even though there's really three with the actual back plate. So the BBT team really had to go to the drawing board on this one, really put some new requirements on our traditional mining rig build. After careful consideration, the team ended up coming up with a design of 39 inches in total length, given about three inches of space between each card on top of the two and a half inches of the card's thickness. And due to the added length on the card, we went ahead and took the standard 16 and a half inch depth to 18 and a half inch. Finally coupled that with some of the latest rigs that we've been building, we went ahead and went a little over 11 inches on the height to have plenty of room to work underneath the rig. Now additional considerations that we had to do, given the length of 39 inches and the actual weight of these cards, we really needed to stabilize the middle of the rig and didn't want to cause any sagging. Even though we're using angled aluminum here, this would warp and bend. We answered the potential warping with some middle stabilization and given the realization that six of these cards were going to require four separate power supplies, we had to come up with another solution to maintain order with the potential wire mess that that could cause. So from a recap, here's the breakdown on the whole entire build. Given the I.O. limitations, we could only put three of these per motherboard when using the H81 Pro BTC. We followed that up with a SanDisk 120 gig SSD for I.O. speed and an 8 gig single stick of DDR3. From a power plant standpoint, we wanted to make sure we went with the best. And the best right now, hands down from our testing, is a pair of 1600 T2 titanium 1600 watt EVGA supernovas and a pair of EVGA supernova 650P2s. In addition to some nice USB powered risers and a class A rockstar crimson red and textured paint job by our fabricator Brian. 
And if you're following along at home and want to build this actual rig, the one other piece that I want to cover is the fact that given the sheer weight of this machine with everything in it, we're talking just under 100 pounds. And due to that, on the outside handles, we went three levels deep on the angled aluminum with using a flat piece of the three quarter and then two full angled aluminum handles. This really reinforced where you're gonna be grabbing it if you were moving it around to a different rack. Well, let's dive into the performance metrics now of what three of these cards on a single board with the 1600 watt and the 650 will actually do for Ethereum mining. Now, I know one of the very first questions you're gonna be asking yourself is how is the power configuration hooked up? We know that we have a 1600 watt T2 and we know that we have a 650 P2 power supply, but how are the actual eight pin connectors? There's four of them per card. So that's 12 eight pins are required for this setup. How are they connected? So now that's one of the distinct advantages of the T2 EVGA power supply. Now that's how we started this very first performance metric. Out of the gate, three cards plugged in with the 1600 watt power supply only powering the graphics card and the 650 only powering the motherboard. The first question was, can it handle stock clocks at 1000 megahertz and 1350? And what was going to be its power usage having titanium level quality and three of these cards on a single power supply? And what we're looking at right here now is a total mega hash of 153 with stock clocks and just pushing right at 1600. So our math was right, that 1600 should work, but we're really bouncing off the top of it, running at 1600 from the proverbial wall on that power supply. Now with this running so close to the top performance rating of that power supply, we needed to deleverage it some. Now following one of our previous 290X builds, where six of those 290Xs always would require two power supplies, we worked through a solution of taking two of the eight pins out of the equation for the 1600 and plugging in two open eight pins out of the 650 in them there. In addition, we went ahead and overclocked just slightly, taking the core clock up to 1060 and the memory from 1350 to 1475. Upon booting the machine up with the 650 carrying a partial load on one of the cards, we see that the 1600 now is holding a strong 1500 watts allowing the team to do about a 6% overclock and still deleverage about 100 watts off that 1600 for it's not carrying all of the weight. This kept us from using peak power performance out of that T2 and kicked up the notch on the actual mega hash to 162 to 165 mega hash sustained. Now having a pretty good familiarity with these Hawaii R9 390 chips, we do know that by and large, most of them like 1160 by 1500. That's a pretty stable overclock for most of these cards. And we didn't find much of an exception here with this either. The 1160 and 1500 megahertz worked like a champ, pushing that mega hash at a strong 182, but really started to put that load back on that 1600, really starting to peak it back over 1600 watts. We decided to bring the machine inside, put some fans on it to make sure if we were gonna do some heavy overclocking that we wanted to make sure that we didn't overheat the cards. In addition, we wanted to get a power reading on that 650 since it was carrying the weight of one of the cards or at least a partial of one of the cards. Now getting this hooked up with some Bach fans keeping things cool, we can see that 650 is carrying two of those eight pins and with that it's carrying 325 watts sustained. Now prior to us actually hooking up one of the graphics card eight pins to the 650, the 650 by itself just holding up the motherboard and the powered risers was only using about 80 to 100 watts per motherboard. So this reading at 325 is really showing that the graphics card with one of the eight pins is using close to 200 watts by itself. And the good thing with having two replications of this build, with having the six cards and two separate motherboards, it allows us to do more of a longer term test of having two of the eight pins connected into one of the cards, really bringing in the power usage of that 650 up to closer to 500 watts, and then having the other one run, both of them holding the 1160 settings. So here's our two week results of having one with two of the eight pins and the other one with a single eight pin, both of them with the 1160 1500 memory configuration. Bottom line, neither of them are really stable over a 36 hour period and, and required constant reboots. So we dialed the settings back down to the original 1060 and 1475 memory and have had excellent success with this over a solid eight day run and still to this day running strong. 
So as a quick recap, we're looking at a rock star, stable, and solid build again for the BBT crew. And yes, why it is split over two complete motherboards, this is a single rig with 12 GPU, pushing out a combined performance of about 330 mega hash. And with Ether holding a strong 13 and a half to 14, this still allows you to more than pay for your power consumption, which we've captured here from $2.97 a day to $20 a week to $89 a month at eight cents per kilowatt per side. So you're talking 170 for the entire machine a month. But even minus power, you're still looking at 12 to 1300 a month, the current hash rates. Now we're not gonna sit here and endorse and say, go out and build this exact same build, 12 GPUs to get you a 330 mega hash. We all know that there's multiple ways to get there, but from a sensational, rock star looking build we wanted to bring this one to you guys demystify if you can actually put 12 gpus in a single rig and bless your screens with some visual entertainment now i know we've had some requests from twitter to see how would these things perform from a gaming side and we'll have a separate video of putting a couple of these in and quad cross firing them in just to show what kind of sick performance two of these would do from a gaming and VR perspective. Drop us a comment below if you're interested in seeing that. And before you click away, hang tight real quick before we can go over what's next. If you follow us on Twitter, you see that we picked up a couple of the 1080 GTXs. We're trying them right now with some mining. In addition, we picked up one of those HTC Vives and we went ahead and invited some friends over. We captured some pretty funny moments with people with their first time in VR. And given all the sick hardware that BBT has, we figured it would be a good service to the community to do a special video on the HTC Vive with some various graphic card configurations. We know there's a lot of people that's looking into something like this and I know it's not necessarily mining, but we're gonna bring it to you anyway. Lastly, and in closing, we know everybody's anticipating the RX 480s and what else AMD's got in store. And you know BBT will be there bringing it to Twitter the moment those things drop. The team's ready and waiting, and we'll be knocking some episodes out with some of the newer tech too. Be sure to like, share, tweet us, follow us on Twitter. When new stuff drops, we're there first. Thanks for hanging in. We'll catch you later. Stay tuned.